Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow to Diagnostics. Today we have an interesting one. Hey, it's Euro Trash 2013 Volkswagen. Something low profile tires. A CC 2.0 turbo. So history with this vehicle is so the owner said they bought it, drove it around for a few days. Parked it and it would, I think it would crank and stall. Just, or crank, start, stall. Trying to talk to this thing with a scanner. Absolutely no communication with anything. We can try to start it. How do you even. Where's the. <laughs> How do you... Is there a button? Engine start stop. Okay. So that definitely confirms the customer complaints. Try again. On the scanner, we have all these modules. I have to input the VIN manually. Can't talk to anything. And. The wiring diagram for this network, uh, interesting layout here. Here's the DLC, and the DLC is connected to this diag data bus onboard diagnostic interface under the left side of dash. And from there, you have at least two networks, like you see here, CAN Drive and CAN Comfort. You have like 30 modules on there. And right here is our ECM, TCM, <clears throat> so they're all on this network. Going back to the data, uh, data bus interface. So let's go to pins 6 and 14 with the scope and see, you know, we can't even talk to this module, so how are we going to talk to anything else? So let's get on 6 and 14 and see what um, the scope waveforms are. Okay, so the scope is connected to pin 6 and 14. And here's what we have. We're at 1.7 volts and that's both channels are at 1.7 volts. Obviously that's dead in the water. Let's turn the key off. See if anything changes at all. You can hear the engine doing something there so it's not like everything's offline we can't talk to this interface okay so I located the data bus diagnostic magic black box it's actually pretty small and light and it lives over by above the brake pedal here there's the connector and you can see the red and white wire, that should be a power. So basically slide off this little blue, you know, clip to get access to the wires. So, and by the way, on the bob, on pin 6 and 14, now we're up to um, about 2.7 volts. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Because the wires here, you know, if we discon disconnect the data bus, they should just go to zero. So something's not really adding up. Right here, so we disconnected this box. Um, and on the data link connector, pins 6 and 14, they shouldn't be attached to anything else they should go to zero volts. So that doesn't make any sense to me. But... Let's make sure we have at least a good power right here on this red and white wire and a good ground on pin 11 brown. So test light.
Here's our test light, connected to battery ground, and I'm touching the red and white wire. We have no power at this box. Make sure our test light works. If we find a power, it'll light up. So we're definitely missing a power. Um, let's measure the ground, the little brown wire. So I'm gonna set you guys up on there. So you can see the test light. This connector is not the most friendly connector to get to, but we'll manage. And here's the brown. Yep. So the ground is good, but we're definitely missing a power. How about that? Let's just verify that. Back to ground here. If our test light finds a power, it'll light up. Red and white wire. Nope nothing. So let's try to find this power feed. 15 amp fuse, 5 amp hot at all times. Doesn't say which fuse panel it is. There is a fuse panel here um, and fuse 15 would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's a 10 amp. That might not be the right fuse so let's find the right fuse first. So if you zoom in on the nano E diagram, you'll see the fuse panels are labeled like A, B, C, and D. So in fuse panel B, that's the fuse we're looking for, 15, 5 amp. Fuse panel C has the fuse for the DLC connector, and that's good. These are, you know, red lights on. We checked out with the test light. So where are these fuse panels A, B, and C? So if you go to overview of fuses, you'll see the locations of the fuse boxes. There's fuse panel D, F, fuse panel C, fuse panel B, E box high, E box low, and we want from November 2011, either this one, E box high or E box low, well, just choose one of them. Okay, it's going to be fuse 15. And this is fuse 15 on fuse panel B. SB15 10 amp after run coolant pump 87. Terminal 87. Um, let's see E box low. What that shows. Okay, SB, where's 15, there it is, five amp onboard diagnostic interface, that's the one we're looking for, so it's going to be E box low, let's find the E box. So I guess there's fuses above and below it. And this might be a problem. We have some aftermarket amp wiring. And where they try plugging that in. But let's find that fuse. See so F15's missing there, but I don't know if that's the high or the low. <clears throat> so let's locate the right one. Very, very interesting. So this is indeed the right fuse box, and fuse 15 is missing. Now, if someone's been doing the, you know, fuse swap tronics here, let's make sure, go through all the fuses, and see what they do and what the values are. 
see if something's you know out of the out of the ordinary. So fuse one, not used. Let's put the laptop over here. Just gonna, right next to the fuse box. Okay. So that's not used. Fuse two is 30 amp. Yep, ABS. Fuse three, 20 amp. That's correct. Fuse four, towing recognition. No towing on this one. Fuse five, five amp. Yep. Fuse six, 15. And fuse seven, 15. So six and seven are there. Fuse eight, DSG transmission mechatronics. So I don't know if this thing has DSG, maybe not. 5 amp and fuse 9. Yep, that's 5 amp right there. Fuse 10 is 20 amp. So fuse 10 is going to be right here, 20. Eleven, twelve, both five amps. So eleven and twelve, five amps. Fuse thirteen is a ten amp. Fourteen can be a twenty-five or thirty. So thirteen is ten amp. Fuse fourteen is twenty-five. Yep. Fuse fifteen data bus onboard diagnostic interface is missing. So where did that fuse go? Fuse 16 is a 10 amp, that's correct. Fuse 17, 10 amp again. So, so I'm seeing a 20 amp. So what's up with that? So, you know, write that down. Fuse 18, fuel quality sensor, natural gas high pressure valve. Maybe we don't have that one. Fuse 19, this should be a 30 amp amplifier, special purpose vehicle control. And look, fuse 19 is a 5 amp. That's not correct. Fuse 20 is a 5 amp. That's correct. Fuse 21, no auxiliary heater. Fuse 22 is 30, yep. And then uh, 23 is a 10 amp, that's correct. Fuse 24, 15 amp, that's also correct. So the only ones that didn't agree here is fuse 17 and 19 is not correct. So maybe you lost the owner. Did anyone play uh, swap swap with the fuses here? Nothing I'm aware of. So let's take 19 and pop it into 15 and see if this car comes back to life. Not blown. Let's check if we restored power at our diagnostic interface. <clears throat> so here's our test light. If it finds the power, it will turn on. And moment of truth here. Yep. Sure enough, so let's plug that magic box in and see if this car will fire up. Alright, so let's see what happens here once we put the key in and try to run this thing. Well, it's running, and let's try to do a full scan here. Turn clear result, yes. Smart scan. Okay, so it just stalled out. Our radio is back online, that's good. We're actually reading codes. And we did have something on our network. This is our scanner talking to diagnostic bus. So we're on the right track. We have a lot of codes stored. So this might be just the beginning of the diagnosis, but it's part of it. All right, so we got a code scan complete. It took a few minutes. So 
How many modules does this thing have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 modules. A lot of code stored. So let's do a full report. And it's going to take a little while to generate. Then we'll clear everything out, try to start it. If it does its start stall thing, we'll chase that problem, um, you know, separate. But this is the pre repair report. We got the car back online. So let's open up the report and we got lost communication, blah, 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 blah. So obviously, with that <clears throat> diagnostic bus offline, we're going to set all kinds of code so we want to clear all this junk out clear DTCs let's see how fast this uh, think tool pros will take care of this pretty quickly and then we'll do a key off kind of let it go to sleep and try to start it see what happens all right so the um, DTC clear is complete, so we have three modules with codes now. Let's do a report. Um, let's see. Just want to do a report for. This is the old report. So let's just jump in. Oh, here we go. Fuel gauge sensor resistance too high. Don't really care. Motor for front window regulator. Don't really care. It needs to be initialized. And then tire pressure monitor stuff. So that's promising. Let's see what it does. If we uh, turn the key off. Let it go to sleep. That's the throttle body resetting. Now, press the brake and, okay, crank no start, and maybe he's out of gas. <laughs> Are you sure you got gas in the tank? Yeah, it had like 90 miles to lump it. I mean, it's showing empty, and it's kind of start stall. Can you put a few gallons in from a gas can or something? So in the engine control menu, we're going to pull up the actual fuel pressure. And it's cool, you can do the search function, and because this thing has like 200 data pids. <clears throat> Let's just... Let's see, fuel... Okay. So the spec is 40 bar. So it's 40 atmospheres. Now we're at 3.58 bar. Let's see what it does. Definitely crank no start now. Let's see if we can activate the fuel pump manually. Well, this is helpful. We actually have a code now in the engine computer. Fuel pump electrical air in circuit. Perfect. P3073. Let's chase that. All right, so looking up wiring diagrams, there's no code description for this 3037 uh, code. But here's our transfer fuel pump fuel level sensor and that goes to this fuel delivery unit fuel pump control module so one two three four five wires to the tank and then these wires it talks to the instrument cluster again let's check powers and grounds and I don't know where this module is but this power feed pin one red and green wire from comes from pin six Fuse 27, 20 amp, fuse panel C, left end of dash. Okay, that's this guy right here. 
And if you look at the fuse numbers, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, there's a 15 amp here for some reason. There's a non-OEM 20 amp here. So again, we might have a problem <laughs> right here. Let's, uh, let's get our trusty test light and just see if we have power there. We have power there. So that would be fuse 29, 28, 27. So again, I wanna go to this diagram of this fuse box and make sure all the fuses are in the correct locations. Well, Here's the fuel pump control module, and this thing was just kind of hanging out, and our fuel pump is unplugged. That would definitely explain our problem with the fuel gauge and the fuel pump not turning on. I have no idea why why this is unplugged. Has anyone been back here? Uh, with... Devin was back there. Okay, so he was doing some checks? Yeah, I don't know. I think he said he was going to try to plug everything back in, and I think he may have just overlooked that one. Oh, okay. Well, this one's kind of important. Because he was mainly up there where you were, and then he came back here, so I said about the fuel pump. Okay. Came back here. Well, let's see if uh, this will do the trick. Oh, okay. I see what works. That's in. Sweet. Should have done a visual inspection back here to save some time. <laughs> yeah, I did it throughout all the... I think this kind of thing. Like, yeah. Whole, uh, all right, well, this thing should fire up, right? back of course no DTCs oh, take it for a spin so now it's unclear what exactly was the original problem and what was built in in the process, yeah. unplugging stuff, moving fuses. So we found two problems for sure. Missing fuse in the underhood fuse box causing a no-con with the entire vehicle. And then an unplugged uh, fuel pump and sending unit causing no fuel pressure and a start stall. So I'm gonna give it back to the owner and just charge him for two, two hours of diagnostics. And basically, if it has any other issues, we'll follow up later, but I don't know. I, I, I think it's good to go. So, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So, a little bonus footage. We got our fuel pump duty cycle and desired and actual fuel pressure. Everything looks great. 40 bar. So, that's the actual high, um, high pressure system. This, this car is a mystery. I mean, we found two problems, but those problems, like fuses don't jump on their own and things don't get unplugged on their own. I have a feeling that the original problem might still be there or might not. You'll, we won't know until we take it for a test drive.